The 6.5 is on the road here at Dell Tech World in Las Vegas. Daniel, it's been quite the show. I mean, we've seen innovations in hardware, in software, in services to kind of wrap a bow around everything. Yeah, it's been a really good week. We're about halfway into the event now. Uh, we've really covered all the bases here. We had some great conversations, Pat. We've gotten deep into the technical weeds. We've had, you know, Michael Dell to come really tell and paint the big picture. Enjoyed a great conversation with uh, Jeff Clark today. Right. Um, and, you know, every one of these conversations bring a little something different. But what we do know for sure is this AI theme, bringing it to life, bringing the customer to the front has been a big focus here at Dell Technologies World. Yeah, Dan, one of the big uh, themes throughout all our, all our coverage, our research notes and stuff like that is uh, the challenge in cooling the data center, right? I mean, it's one thing, I mean, it's hard enough you can create a brand new data center just to do GPUs uh, from scratch, but the reality is is that enterprises just can't uh, control alt delete uh, and start over. So you have to get a little bit more innovative when it comes to cooling these giant uh, racks of GPUs uh, and storage. So why don't we dive in here? We have Andrew and Tim from Dell. How are you gentlemen? Doing great, thank you well, for having us you. here. Welcome to this 6.5. It looks like uh, uh, GPUs and ASICs are keeping you guys busy. <laughs> to say the least, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. So let's talk a little bit about ERDHX. Um, Andrew, I'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about the, what was newly announced and sort of how it's helping to transform and, and meet these data center efficiency needs. Yeah, I'd love to talk to that. The uh, E stands for enclosed, and then it's the same as a traditional rear door heat exchanger that you'd see on the industry today. But what's unique is because of that enclosed aspect of it, we can run this with warmer water temperatures. Now, when we talk about data center cooling efficiency, the warmer water temperature is a huge impact for being able to save energy, save cost, uh, and that's what the enclosed rear door heat exchanger is really delivering for customers. What it's supposed to help alleviate, as we talk about these direct liquid cooled systems and we talk about these rack scale, 100 plus kilowatt racks, yeah. there's still a lot of heat coming off as air. And that's what the enclosed rear door heat exchanger does is it helps eliminate that need for chilled water for capturing that hot air. We can do that with warmer water, capture the hot air, isolate it from the data center, really drive efficiencies, drive savings back to the customer. Yeah, so Tim, do you have anything to add on that in, in terms of, let's say the specific numbers or, or how, this, how efficient is this? Yeah, certainly. So the importance of raising the water temperature may be not completely clear. So, if we have to keep water cool, like for air conditioning systems, we typically cool the water down to like 45 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That means in almost every place in the United States, we've got to use refrigeration to cool down the water that then flows through heat exchangers that then cools buildings like this one. That takes a ton of energy. Now for a building like this, I don't know the exact number, but maybe they're needing a few hundred kilowatts of cooling. That's one rack. If I multiply that by a thousand racks, that's a lot of energy spent. So what Andrew just said about raising the water temperature up to 32 degrees C, that's 95 Fahrenheit, 90 Fahrenheit, excuse me. That means that now I can just use the outside temperature. I don't need chillers to do the cooling. It saves a ton of energy. It's a lot cheaper for our customers. And we've designed this to be future-proof for what we see coming in the, the near future. So we can cool up to 80 kilowatts of air-cooled electronics. And then if we combine that with DLC and other things that we'll probably talk about, we can make that rack uh, capable of handling nearly 500 kilowatts of heat, which is phenomenal. One rack, you know, about a meter deep, a little less than a meter wide, 500 kilowatts. Yeah. And if I might add, that's about a, it will provide about a 60% savings over the other deployments from an energy perspective for any given customer. Right. So, um, you know, it's really a heterogeneous data center. And, and I'm curious, do certain workloads drive extreme power and extreme power uh, thermal challenges more than others? I mean, it seems like training would light up everything 
including not just the GPUs or, or the accelerators, uh, but also the storage and also the network, everything would seem to get hot or is there some baseline uh, uh, workload where it doesn't vary? Yeah, I'll jump in there. So absolutely, training is one of the most intense workloads, especially because if I've built one of these really large clusters to do training, that's basically all operating at once to, to build that, those models. Most of our customers, to be honest, aren't doing that. They're building out specific smaller clusters that are doing inferencing. But with these, especially with these new reasoning models, they're lighting up not necessarily the entire rack for each query, but they're lighting up several GPUs at a time full on. And if I'm, if I'm Lowe's department store, like we heard yesterday, and I've got 300,000 customers all pinging that at once, I'm lighting up a data center, right? right? Now maybe it's not 100% all the time, but it's pretty close to full load as long as I'm doing that. So inferencing we're seeing can also bring pretty intense workloads. So this AI era, era, which is bringing huge benefits, a lot, we're seeing a lot of value add and our customers are seeing a lot of value add, is in fact one of those workloads that's really lighting up the data center power wise. Got you. So obviously agents, which we're hearing a lot about, is, is inference at scale in many ways, right? There's, there's little bits of uh, test time and other things that'll likely take place that'll optimize and continuously tune. And, but like, is it all AI? I mean, is it, is the, is the really the demand is all in your, you know, and obviously I have a thesis, but like, it just feels to me like all this thermal, all the sort of data center design, all this energy demand is pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It's just AI, more training, more inference, agentic, physical, and, and as it evolves. I'm glad you asked that because AI has certainly been an accelerator for all of this discussion about advanced cooling and alternative cooling. But these are things that we've been doing for nearly a decade with liquid cooling because there have been workloads for more than this time that have HPC. required it. HPC, high performance computing uh, are very intensive. So they started with the CPUs getting hotter, needing that advanced cooling. Now we're adding the GPUs as we've seen over the last several years with, with our partners. Uh, and I think as we move into the future, we'll see additional components needing that additional cooling all because these workloads are advancing so rapidly and requiring more and more compute, storage, memory, you know, networking, all of that. That makes sense. So, um, you know, whether it's DLC uh, or the new rear heat exchanger, it all sounds hard, but how does this actually make it easy for customers? It seems hard, hard, a little hard to me unless, you know, they're not having to go fish for a third party uh, solution. It's fully integrated. Uh, yeah. by you. Yeah, I'll take that one first. So Dell's integrated rack series of products are fully integrated, uh, just as the name sounds. They're yes. integrated racks. Dell will take on the burden of handling 90% of the work here. So we'll take your orders, your ser whatever the servers is, are that you want, rack, stack, we'll even test those in our factories with liquid cooling, with networking all cabled up and then we'll literally ship that entire rack to customers, roll it into their data centers, help set it up, get it all connected to power and cooling, do that last mile testing, hand over the keys, and they're off and running. Uh, so it really is a turnkey solution for our customers to really drive uh, a lower friction model because it is new. DLC, right. alternative cooling, advanced cooling are all very new but as we break it down into piece parts, we can really help give it to customers in ways that they can digest and consume easily. Yeah. So, so Tim, um, you know, and I'd like to hear from both of you as we sort of wrap up this conversation, but we're hearing about liquid cooling. It kind of seems to be the future as we get more density in these racks and more heat. Uh, and then of course, getting it to room temperature or even warm water, that seems to be a, even another goal. But, not everything's going big. I mean, some of the announcements here at Dell Tech World focused on, you know, smaller enterprise deployments, things that can be done in a small enterprise data center. These are going to be RTX likely, 6, cards. likely uh, air cooled in, in many cases. So, you know, if there's some hesitancy about liquid cooling, um, you know, how do you kind of talk about air cooling? It still has its place, right? Absolutely. Uh, air cooling is actually going to be core to our business for years and years to come. There's, we need liquid cooling 
to enable the dense compute that will enable many of these applications. But on the ground, uh, in, in especially out at the edge, it's air. And air is actually a great cooling fluid. Yeah. You just need fans to push the, to push the air through. The fans use power. So we are also working in that space. Our engineers, some of whom are in our booth today, they're literally still getting into the weeds with our, our fan suppliers and tweaking fan angles and so on. Through Dell's engineering, we've increased the efficiency of the fans and the servers from the teens of percentage to close to 50% efficiency. So that means we've, not only are we moving more air, we're using the same or less power to move that air through. So, so cooling is a holistic activity for us. Yeah. It brings value to the customer because the more power that we free up for the compute, the more value they get right. out of every dollar they spend for their, their data center, right? Or, or their data closet, whatever it is. That's really important to us. Yeah, just to reiterate some of the things that Tim said there, I think it's important to, to really iterate that Dell's innovation engine is firing on all cylinders for air cooling. It hasn't slowed down because DLC is on the scene. We've certainly ramped up the DLC innovation engine as well. You're, you've seen the innovations, the announcements we've made. I think air cooling is, it has a place for a long time, years to come, as Tim said, right? I think there's another element to this question, though, where there is a lot of hesitancy for adopting DLC because of its unknown, and we talked about how easy it is to adopt. And I think there's also elements of if you step back and look at the efficiencies you can drive with DLC, that is another impetus that can often offset right. those costs that you're going to be consuming with air cooling. Every customer is going to be different, and that's why we're going to be ready to address the whole range, the whole spectrum of needs from our customers. That makes Plant. sense. Andrew and Tim, I want to thank you both so much. We've got to wrap this one up here, but thanks for joining the 6.5 here at Dell Technologies World 2025. Very interesting stuff. We've got to, we got to deal with the thermals, Pat. You know, you've got to keep, you got to keep the racks cool. You know, we're going to scale these things to Listen, thousands, it, tens of thousands. It's literally a hot technology, so. This is the hottest tech. We're keeping it cool, though, guys. Exactly. We're keeping it cool. There we go. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here at Dell Technologies World 2025. We're the 6.5 on the road. We're going to take a little break. We'll be back with you soon.